All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, look right into our solution for uh, assignment number five. Okay, so assignment number five is a, a test on the factorial system using uh, recurring method calls in Java. So let's open up our tests.java file, and we will see here that we have a bunch of tests that uh, outline how this thing should work. Um, I just have some basic factorial calls. So I, I do a call to the factorial uh, method passing in 3, 4, 5, and 6, and each one should incrementally return a larger number based on uh, the system that we are using, the, the factorial system. Okay, so in case uh, in case you don't know what it is that I'm talking about, that probably means that you have not yet uh, tried to complete assignment number five. Um, if you haven't done that yet, then I suggest you go to uh, howtoprogramwithjava.com forward slash Java Practice Assignment Five. So I'll have that link showing up on the screen for you, but uh, you'll probably want to click it. Uh, down below sh there should be a link there that you can click on that takes you right to assignment number five um, if you do know what I'm talking about and you have attempted this assignment then all should be well and you are looking forward to seeing the solution so uh, this test is or this assignment is actually pretty easy to implement because I just wanted to drive home the um, the topic of, of factorial or rather um, recursive calls of, of methods so let's uh, let's go ahead and run everything so let's right click on our tests here and say run as Java or sorry JUnit test, and we should see that a bunch of the tests fail. Uh, all the tests fail. Perfect. So um, you see the first one saying, you know, it, I expected to get six, but instead I got one. Uh, this next one, it's the same story. I expected 24, but I got one, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, what we need to do is look at the system under test. So the system under test, which I name S U T, system under test is the factorial object. So if I go here and, and just hit F3 or I can right click and say open declaration which is F3 in the Spring Source Tool Suite, I can go right to the method that it's calling and you'll see here that it just says return one. So that's why all these things keep saying that it, it only got one where it was expecting something bigger. Um, so here's where I say you'll need to implement your code here. So this method is where all the magic happens. This will be your recursive method that will, in the end, return the proper total of the factorial number that's passed in. Okay? So the value being passed in is the variable that represents the factorial numbers being multiplied. So if you're solving 5 factorial, then the first value passed in here should be 5, and then 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? And in the end, the total um, of the calculation should be returned. So I think the best way that we can go about doing this, uh, well, there's two things that you can do to 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 implement this code. Um, the first thing is you can just pass everything into the method here, the method signature. Um, you can pass in both the value that's being calculated as well as perhaps some sort of uh, running total. Um, but as you see here, that's that's not what I've sort of defined in the method signature. I've only defined um, just a, a value to be passed in. And I did that because I, I was sort of forcing you guys to create a, a local sort of uh, instance variable that you can use to calculate the total. Um, so I'm going to create or instantiate this total. Uh, I think I should start it at, um, I'll start it at 1 and we'll see what happens with it. Um, so now when we, we come into the factorial, since the factorial should be called recursively, I know that I need to invoke the factorial method inside uh, of itself. So what that looks like is I want to be able to call factorial again and pass in some sort of a value. Okay? Um, so this this will start our recursive call. So the you know something will kick off the initial call of factorial, which is actually our tests um, that we looked at previously. Uh, and then when it goes into the code for the factorial, it's going to invoke itself again and it'll go through this sort of loop. Um, where it will hopefully uh, terminate at some point with a proper total. So as with all recursive method calls, we need to make sure that we have a defined ending point. Okay, so at some point we need to make sure that factorial does not get called uh, anymore. It's it's get, it's called for the last time and then we're done. So I like to sort of define that right away. So I want to say that if um, the value, let's say, 
uh, is equal to 1, then I want to just return the total. <clears throat> okay? So that means that as the value gets passed in, it should be, uh, you know, decrementing itself until it gets to the value of 1. And when it does hit the value of 1, I just want to return the total that I've calculated. Okay, so that, that is the, the end of the method. Otherwise, okay, I can either put an else, or I can just not put an else because it'll flow that way naturally. Um, otherwise, I want to call the factorial method, okay? So if I call the factorial method, I want to make sure that what I'm passing in is sort of, is decrementing, like I said, it's going down. So I want to say maybe value minus 1, okay, that's a, that's a poten potential um, uh, solution here. Um, but I also want to make sure that I'm actually calculating a total as I'm going through this, right? Because that's the whole point. I want to get an accurate total out of this. So how do we do that? What What is the process of of, uh, of factorial here? Um, and the process is um, 5, right? 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? So that value goes down with every step. 5 goes 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's the you know, previous value minus 1 is the new value, okay? Previous value minus 1 is the new value that we're passing in. So, cool, but I actually want to calculate that total. So how do I do that? Well, I've got this, this variable that I've declared here, this uh, instance variable called total. So perhaps I want to say total is equal to itself multiplied by the value that's being passed in. Okay, so in this case I'm going to get 1 equals 1 times 5. Okay, so alright, fair enough. And then we can um, call the next uh, instance of factorial. Now what if I get rid of this return statement? Okay, I can't do that because it's saying you need to add a return statement to your method. So how do I do this? Can I just say return factorial? Okay, so that's, remember that this is, this um, method is returning an int. Okay, so that's what it wants. It wants to, to return an int. And uh, when I call itself and say return itself, obviously um, when you call itself, it's going to return an int because that's, you know, safe to say because it's de declared as returning an int. So um, there's no harm in saying return factorial. So I've got this little method here. Um, I'm thinking that it's going to work, so let's sort of walk ourselves through this. Let's say the first integer that gets passed in is 5. What happens? Is 5 equal to 1? No. It, then we say 1 equals 1 times 5. So total now is uh, assigned the value of 5. And then we call factorial with value minus 1. Value being passed in previously was 5, so now it's going to be 4. And we're going to call factorial with 4. And then it's going to call itself again. We're going to go back in and say, is 4 equal to 1? No. Continue. Total equals total times 4. So what was the previous value of total? Well, it was 5, remember? So now let's say 5 equals uh, 5 times 4. Okay, so that's the, the first step of the, um, of the, of the uh, factorial system here. We have 5 times 4. So cool, we're, we're on the right track. So 5 equals 5 times 4. So then, sorry, total equals 5 times 4. So now total equals 20. And then what happens? Well, value got passed in as 4, remember? and it's going to maintain that value of 4 um, in its own little scope, right? So, fair enough, so now it's going to say 4 minus 1 is 3, and it's going to call factorial again. So now 3 is going to be passed in, again, with a new instance of factorial being executed, and it's going to say, is 3 equal to 1? No. And it's going to say total, which is equal to 20, equals total times 3 now, because we passed the value in as 3, so now we're hitting 3. And uh, so whatever that is, it's going to be 60, I believe. 20 times 3 is 60. And then it's going to pass in value minus 1. It's going to be 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2. So factorial is going to be called with the value of 2 now. 2 goes in. Is 2 equal to 1? No. Total, which is equal to 60, equals total times 2. Okay, so we're actually successfully doing the 2. You see the pattern here emerging. So now it's going to be 120. And it's going to call... Uh, factorial again with 2 minus 1. So now we're passing in 1 for factorial. And once again it calls itself recursively now with a value of 1. And then what's going to happen? If value equals 1 then return total. Well, remember I just said value is now equal to 1. So this will now be true 
and it will return total. And what was total? Well, total was 120. So I, I'm kind of cheating here because I'm not doing the final step, which is the multiplying by 1. Uh, but we all know that when we multiply anything by 1, we just get itself. So there's really no point in multiplying it by 1 because the value, the result, is not going to change. So then we're going to return total. And since we return total, we're not calling the second return value. The second value is not happening here. Um, or sorry, the second operation, which is the return, is not happening. And that's good because we don't want to have an endless loop of factorial going on here. Okay? So it sounds good to me. I think I'm happy with that. So let's go to our tests and actually run the tests. So I will say run as JUnit. And as you can see, everything is now green. Excellent. Now there's one more spot here that maybe um, that you might have not had passing. And that is the fact that I want to make sure that you are actually implementing the code uh, recursively. Because all you would really need to do, another solution here, let me wipe this out. Another solution is just to say, okay, what's being passed in? Value. Let me just create a for loop that goes from, let's say, 0 to <clears throat> the number of uh, iterations of the value that you're passing in. And just say, um, you know, have a running total here. Let's say total equals total times, <clears throat> um, what would that be, i? Okay, although I think this is, should be the other way around, sorry. i equals value, i is, I think, greater than uh, 0, i minus minus. So I'm doing it the other way around. I'm starting at the value, which is going to be 5, and I'm going to be decreasing the value of i by 1, and doing total equals total times i, and then I'm just going to say return total. Okay, so now let's give this a shot, and let's run these tests, let's see if I've done it correctly. So as you can see here, all of these other tests pass. Okay, so when all the um, the factorial calls with the numbers pass, except for the last test, which is the one where I actually ensure that the per the purpose of this assignment, this test, is to um, is to you know complete the assignment using a recurring or recursive algorithm. Okay, um, and when we're doing it this way with a for loop, this is not recursive. So this is kind of a, a curveball I threw in there just to make sure that you guys didn't cheat and that I, I'm making sure that you guys are actually uh, implementing this in a recursive fashion. So there you go. There's a solution. Let me roll all that back and go back to our previous solution. Um, not, not a very difficult test if you've dealt with recursive algorithms before, um, but this test or this assignment was um, targeted at those who have never done recursive algorithms before. Okay. So once you can truly understand uh, how to solve this problem uh, in, in this uh, way, then I think you have a good uh, foundation for understanding how um, these recursive algorithms actually work. And then you can implement a more um, impressive or a more complex solution on your own. Okay? Fantastic. So uh, thanks very much for uh, tuning into this solution, and uh, I look forward to the next assignment.